In this lesson, we continue with drawing some isometrics. These are the isometrics that we did not cover last time. But before I get to the isometrics, I need a new vocab vocabulary term. And that vocabulary term is a net. And a net is a two-dimensional pattern which can be folded to form a three-dimensional figure. Now there are very there's lots of definitions for a net in mathematics. This is just one of them. So in uh, I think that some of you might have seen this. Uh, you should have. This are six faces, and I could fold that up to form a cube. There are, as a matter of fact, there are 11 distinct uh, nets for a cube, and we'll be exploring that in class. This would form a square pyramid because if I were to fold those to a point, yes, then they would make a pyramid. Uh, nets are very beneficial. If we're working with a three-dimensional figure, then we can sometimes flatten them out and talk to them about the, talk to each other about the pieces and what the lengths are here and here and, and from the center, and maybe we're talking about an altitude. So I like nets for explaining that, okay? Now, let's go on to the drawings of some shapes. We already have explored drawing cubes and rectangles and things like that. So let's do some shapes that we haven't done. Let's start with a cylinder. And a cylinder will have a circle for a one face and a circle for another face and then it wraps around so it's all curved on the sides right well if we do did an isometric we're going to look at it and we're not going to draw a circle but we're going to kind of flatten the circle out in that 30 degree angle and it's going to look more like a ellipse so we draw one ellipse this way I can draw if you'd like and here well I kind of like making two sides that are the same length and then this curve should match that curve and then of course there's a hidden curve back in the back I've had a lot of practice so once again you know cylinder curve sides that match curve and hidden if you want I found it's easier if you just kind of keep on going. Well, if I do a cylinder, I can also make a cone because it has the same kind of base. Now this time I'm going to make the base and the hidden edge. Then you choose a point and you put the sides that go to that point. Easy enough, right? Well, I say that. Um, then it gets a little bit tricky if we start making prisms. Now, remember a prism has, like a cylinder, will have a matching basis. We will define prism later, things like that, but I think you know what a prism is. So I am going to actually start off with my uh, cylinder, just like that. There's, there's my oval shape, right? Let's make a pentagonal prism. So if I put a pentagonal prism, it's gonna have five vertices. One, two, three, four, five. I'm using a green pen, you can use this as a pencil. All right, so, then, if I connect those, that is my flattened out pentagon. Then, once again, make vertical lines that are all the same length. Now, I'm not measuring, I'm sketching. But this one, this face, is going to be parallel there. This should be parallel to that one, this should be parallel to that. 
Now let's do it again and include our hidden. So nice flat oval. Let's make a hexagon this time. A hexagonal. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, connect them. all come down the same amount, that's going to make a square. This one's going to be parallel to this one. So, okay. Now, we decided we were going to include our hidden edges this time. So, um, come down this way. Come down this way. looks like a hexagonal prism. Okay, pentagonal prism, hexagonal prism, that's a little review. Uh, if I can make those like the cone, I can do the same thing. I can make a pentagonal cone, and it's just the same way. You start off with your oval shape, you put five dots, one, two, three, four, five, you make base. Uh, and like before, we have hidden edges in the back. Those are going to be hidden there. Okay. Put a point up there. Then all of these edges go to the point. And there's one more right there. A pentagonal pyramid. Uh, well, I guess we could do a square pyramid. That's not should be too bad. Oval, square is going to be. Well, maybe that's going to be too easy, right? Boom, boom. You'll notice it looks like a parallelogram. Here, I'll do it like this. Some of you like working upside down. This time, I'll make it open, and I won't show the hidden line. So now that looks very much 3D. A square pyramid upside down that looks kind of like a funnel. All right. Now, moving on, we need to do more curved surfaces. So another curved surface that will show up this year is a sphere. And a sphere starts off with a circle, and then it will have, we will mark the diameter like that. That kind of looks like a sphere. We could also include another sphere, another, excuse me, a, an equator going up north and south. So I'll try to draw that one more time. Let's see. Circle. Equator, which is, and then the other one that goes right over there. No, I'm not expecting you to get them right the first time. I just want you to know what they look like, and if you're trying to draw these spheres, things like that. If I can draw a sphere, I definitely can make a hemisphere, a half a sphere, right? Fold it out. See, it's not perfect. It's not perfect at all. Maybe bigger is better. Or maybe not. That's why I wish I had my pencil. All right. The last thing I want to tackle is drawing maybe not a three-dimensional shape, but a two-dimensional shape that goes on forever otherwise known as a plane. So here we go. There is a plane. Now we know that I can have a line that is on that plane, but sometimes I can make a line that goes through the plane. So 
to draw that, maybe I want to go this way, and I can either show it hidden, so I will see it, and then it shows up again here. So now this is a plane with line one piercing the plane at point P. If I wanted to have uh, a line hit at point P and look like it goes on the plane, well then if I continue that maybe, or a line, maybe we'll just make it. Then that looks like line segment QP is on the plane and then line one goes through P, excuse me, it's right there, kind of pierces. All right, well what about when two planes intersect. Okay, so we'll have our initial plane. One. Now the trick here is to think about the edge. And what we really want to do is make this line parallel to this one. That's what will make it look right. And then go this way. And it's still just a parallelogram. Oops, that wasn't as good as it could be. Now, can you see it? I don't know. So I'm going to go back and make this a little darker. So I'll be able to see that. Not that. See it down here. And there. And there's your hidden part. And of course, when two planes intersect, they intersect on a line. So that's a picture of two planes intersecting, and they will intersect on a plane, uh, on a line. Um, I can draw two planes not intersecting. So we're going to repeat that. Here's one plane and another plane. And one way to show that is have a line maybe going through those here. Now it looks like they're stacked, right? If those two planes intersect one line and they intersect at different points. All right, I know this looks like terrible difficulty, but with practice it becomes easy and of course uh, I'm just looking to try to help you out. Okay, we'll see you next time.